In this very short tutorial, I want to talk to you about the Fisher equation, which displays a relationship between the real interest rate, the nominal interest rate, and the rate of inflation. So the Fisher equation states that the real interest rate is equal to the nominal interest rate minus the inflation rate. And to understand this, let's just remind ourselves what we mean by nominal interest rate. This is the published interest rate. This is the number that you would see on a credit card bill, a mortgage statement, a bond yield. This is the yield to maturity that equates the present value of the dollars today with the stream of dollars received in the future. Now, if we take that nominal interest rate and we subtract off the inflation rate or the average rate of inflation over the period of this contract, we get the real interest rate. This is the real yield. This is the inflation adjusted or equivalent in purchasing power terms yield on this security. Now, when you make a decision about whether or not you want to borrow or lend, you look at the nominal interest rate. And then you also form some expectation about what the inflation rate is going to be over the life of the contract of the security. So sometimes we write the Fisher equation this way. The real interest rate is equal to the nominal interest rate minus the expected rate of inflation. And we can rearrange this equation in such a way that the nominal interest rate is what we're really getting or we're really paying plus the inflation rate that we are expecting. And now this is an identity. Now we move on to the Fisher effect or the Fisher hypothesis, which is a theory. And this theory suggests that the real interest rate is determined by something different from inflation of supply and demand for assets, real return to capital, those sorts of things, not expected inflation. So if that's the case, if we see an increase in the expected inflation rate, then the nominal interest rate should increase by the same amount. We just rewrite our contract to account for this expected inflation and our real interest rate ends up being unaffected by inflation. So that's the Fisher effect and the Fisher equation. I hope that helps you understand the relationship between the nominal interest rate, the real interest rate, and the inflation rate.